Hello, and welcome to the first video in this CG2 Blender tutorial series. In this series, we will cover the following. Painting textures directly to the UV map and model. Painting decals to the UV map and model. Exporting UV maps and using them to clean up our painted image in GIMP 2.8. Re-importing our cleaned up image to Blender and applying it as our final texture. Exporting our model to Unity. Setting up basic materials in Unity and finally using Crazy Bump to create normal and ambient occlusion maps and applying those to our model in Unity. Okay, let's get started. To begin with, open Blender and you'll have the default cube and if you are on something else just go ahead and save and click File, New, Reload Startup File, get back to the default cube. Now before we get going I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to turn on my screencast keys so you see on the bottom left of my screen you'll see my screencast keys just in case I forget to say anything about something I'm pressing. It's kind of helpful to know what people are clicking to be able to make progress. So I'm just going to use my mouse wheel and scroll in and I'm going to press tab to enter edit mode. Now for scaling I tend to use commands and hotkeys more than I do um, just pressing S and scaling randomly. I would rather use a command and be precise. So we're going to scale with commands. I'm going to press S X3 and scale three times on the X axis. Press enter. I'm going to press SZ2 and press enter to apply the change. Three on my numpad and I'm going to press SY.1 enter to apply the change and now we have a, a wall instead of a cube. I'm also going to hold control down and grab the manipulator handle and drag up on the z-axis until I'm even on the line. I like to use the control because it gives me the grid snapping and it makes it really easy to keep track. Now I'm just going to unwrap this with U, Smart UV Project, and OK. And our model is unwrapped. I'm going to put my cursor at the top of my screen, right click, go to Split Area, adjust my line and left click, and split my window. Then I'm going to press T and N to remove Tools and Properties panels. And I'm going to split this window vertically. The same method, right click, split area, adjust my line, left click. I'm going to make the top window a UV image editor, the bottom window a node editor. In the node editor window, I'll press N just to open up the area. I like to have a little more open space. In our UV image editor window, I'm going to press A and then I'm going to press R, 90, Enter, just to rotate it so that it matches the direction of our stencil when we bring it in. Now the first thing we need to do to be able to actually apply any texture, obviously, is we need to create a material. So we're going to go over here to the Properties bar, and we're going to click Material, Add, and then New, and then just below that, we're going to click that, and we're going to name that Wall. Press Enter. Now we have our wall material. I'm going to go to my node editor and scroll in a little. You can read it a little bit better and I'm going to press shift A, go to texture, image texture, and drop an image texture. Then we're going to go into our UV window. We're going to click new, create a new image. We're going to name it wall. We don't need to change any of the other settings. We're just going to create the basic image at 1024 by 1024. Click OK. And now everything goes dark and our UV map is selected. So now we can see that we have an image behind our UV map, but it's just a black image. I'm going to hold Control, mouse wheel click, and slide to smooth scroll to get my size height wise in my window. I'm going to click View. Go to Paint Mode. Now that I'm in Paint Mode, I'm going to press T to open my Tools panel, and I'm going to adjust my map and image back into my field of view. Now we're not going to be doing anything with the tools up here right now. Uh, for the purposes of this, we're going to just be using stencils and so forth, so to me I think it's a lot simpler to actually get a nice texture without really having to work so hard. So we're going to scroll down until we see Texture, click the arrow, and open it up and then scroll down till we see new 
click new, click where it says texture and name it wall, press enter. And now we have our new brush, but we have no data applied to our brush. So we're going to go all the way to the right of the screen. In the properties bar, we're going to click texture, image texture, click brush wall. And down below our preview, you'll see an option to open. You click that and open an image. My image is in my download folder. And I'm just going to use this concrete texture. On the left in our paint tools, you'll see that texture pop up. And now we have a wall texture that can be used to paint with. So below that, you'll see tiled. That's the default setting for the brush mapping. If you click tiled and go up to stencil and select it, when you mouse over your UV window, you'll see the stencil of our wall pop up. Now normally what I would do is I would scale it to fit by holding shift, right click, and rolling my mouse. I would scale it to fit inside my UV map, like so. But because we're going to be demonstrating how to clean this up in GIMP 2.8 later, uh, and, and for the purposes of you know water stains and moss and things like that, when you add irregular things, it's really hard to get it positioned exactly the way you want it without painting outside of your UV map. And that's just extra information for the computer to keep track of. Um, and it could be wiped out in the alpha channel, and, and you don't have to look at it anymore, and the computer doesn't have to process it anymore. And it also makes your work just look a little cleaner. So for the purposes of being able to demonstrate that later, I'm going to just right-click and move this up and then shift right click and scale it to where it's oversized and then align it with the edge of my face there. And the reason why I'm stopping there is because I can't paint beyond the boundary of the stencil. So I don't have an odd overlap from face to face. This is helpful. So now we're going to press F and just drag our mouse to scale our brush up, left click, and then we're just going to left click and drag our mouse in one movement all the way through the entire area, painting our texture. That's simple, and you can see that because my stencil does not go below that line, I cannot paint below that line. My brush is a little bit below 100%, so I'm going to hit it one more time. And that's just going to brighten it up and get a really nice, complete painted texture. If you want to run your brush up to 100%, you're more than fine doing it. For me, I just like to be a little below 100% just in case I'd like to make changes, do a little bit lighter. You never really know, and it's easier to, to add more than it is to take it away, and, and, and you end up completely starting over. Now we're also going to drag this down, match it up with the top edge of that, face and do the same thing. Now you can see down at the bottom, you can see it overlaps all of my other faces. So there is a little bit of finesse that's required and you can see that I have two complete faces that are covered and then two partials. So I'm going to try to just smoothly get in here and get those two as well as possible without getting the others and then go back over everything and fill it in and then I'm going to drag my stencil down and I did pretty good. I'm just going to drag my stencil down and position it here so that I can't cause a problem. And position it here, paint the other side and now our image is painted and we want to show a texture. So we're going to go to our 3D viewport and we're going to click material and we see nothing. We're going to click texture, we see nothing. We'll press Shift Z, we see nothing. Shift Z to go back. And the reason why I did that was just to demonstrate that it won't display until we actually connect it. To what we're working on. So we're going to go into our node editor, connect our image texture to color, 
and everything turns black, but that's okay because we have not selected our image yet. Next to where it says open, you'll see a little arrow, and if you just mouse over it, your image will pop up, click on wall, and now your wall texture is applied to the object. In our next video, we will be following up with how to put a stencil on our model with the same paint technique. Now before I go, I'm going to render it just so we can get an idea of how it renders. It actually looks pretty good for how fast it was. Just a simple method. So until next time, thank you, and we'll see you again in the next video.